The next Fire Emblem Engage banner is upon us, this time we got an Illusion lineup with Kagetsu, Rosado, and Rearmed Hortensia, plus Attuned Ivy. I think we can safely say that our next Engage banner will involve Som, so if you want Tamara or Forgato, then time to start saving. For now though, we'll be talking about these stats and new skills for our Illusions, plus go over some general playstyle and build ideas. In a surprising turn of events, Kagetsu is our 4 star focus unit. He will be available at 4 and 5 star rarity, then demote into the 4 star pool after the banner is over. As the pre-promoted Swordmaster who you have to face with a deadly crit weapon, I'm kinda shocked it didn't make Kagetsu into our usual monthly new hyped up Swordmaster 5 star. As much as I like Lapis, I kinda get why she was a demote, but Kagetsu, I don't know man. Now, Kagetsu is one of Ivy's retainers and is naturally a Sword Infantry unit. For stats, he has 42 HP, 43 attack, 47 speed, 35 defense, and 25 res. Kagetsu has top tier speed and I believe is the fastest free to play Sword Infantry. He has attack and speed super boons with a higher defense than res focus. We got a lot of competitive Swordmaster wannabes, so Kagetsu will do just fine in terms of stats. For old skills, Kagetsu at least brings something interesting. Moonbow and attack and speed ideal 3 are fine, but now we got no follow-up 3 in the demo pool. If you wanted to merge Pern and Lumera, then Kagetsu is another way to get this B skill. Now for Kagetsu's weapon, it's the Reversal Blade Plus, 14 Might Inheritable Sword that states, if unit initiates combat or is within 2 spaces of an ally, grant plus for all stats and inflicts penalty on the foe's stats equal to the current bonus on each of the foe's stats times 2. Reversal Blade Plus is the same as Bridal Flavia's Bridal Blade Plus. This is a fairly basic stat stacking weapon, but it is dependent on the fell bringing field buffs. The incoming panic effect will punish field buffs, but if they are not present, then this is just a plus for all stats weapon, and well, that's not the greatest. It's not that field buffs aren't common, but depending on the foe to activate your own weapon is always a bit iffy. For general playstyle, if you want a stat focused budget build, I would honestly suggest Halloween Kellum's Farmer's Tool Plus Sword over Reversal Blade. Both will give plus 4 stats at their weakest, but Farmer's Tool has built in bonus doubler, which now gives us agency to get those extra stats via field buffs. Don't got to rely on the enemy. The weapon also just gives self and team wide attack and defense field buffs, so you could run something like Speed and Res Oath or Rouse, and then a bonus double seal, and now we got tons of stats for Kagetsu. Since he has no fall up already, that's fine for a budget setup, and attack and speed ideal can proc off the field buffs. For Reversal Blade, it's sadly just not that impressive. Another budget option will be Inigo's No Blade Plus. That gives us no fall up in the weapon slot, so now you can run something else like a Dodge B skill. It's just more build variety. Now, if you want to throw Kagetsu's name into the best free to play Swordmaster arena, then Arcane Devourer is kind of just tough to beat. Slaying, no follow up if you outspeed, and Breath Type cooldown. All good stuff that plays nicely with dodge B skills, vital astro builds, Gallic reflexes, etc. Kagetsu can run the usual setups like Times Pulse for pre charge vital astro. You could run that with Tempo 4 to get partial DR piercing. For Godlike Reflexes, we now have Buffer 4 for the instant pre-charge. If you want to get into the Engage Spirit, Emblem Mart's Slaying with Arcane Devourer can put Godlike Reflexes on one cooldown, which is wild. You can pre-charge and recharge that special with Times Pulse 4 in that scenario. If you sacrifice Marth, Potent 4 is a new beast skill option. Less damage reduction, but access to a potential third attack is just more damage opportunities even if it's at a reduced amount. For some other fun stuff, Pulse Up will always give quit on if you wanted to run something like a higher quit on special like AoEs or maybe a cheesy miracle. If you got enough DR, Assassin's Strike is a damage option and No Quarter can be run for full DR Pierce. Of course, Special Sparrow 4 also works. If you want to run Kagetsu with Ivy, you could do Hexploit for just a fun adaptive damage build. All in all, only so much we can do for your free to play Swordmaster, but things like Emblem Marth and Potent are opening up more crazy combos. For example, you can run the Vital Astro plus times pulse build with any weapon thanks to Mart slaying when engaged. Now, Kagetsu is another solid free to play sword infantry, at least he's a 4 star focus banner unit if you want to merge him up. I know myself and many others are still chasing those lapis copies. Now next, our one new permanent 5 star is Rosado, who is a retainer to Princess Hortensia. In Engage, Rosado joins with Erica and Ephraim's Emblem Ring, so kinda good timing with our Sacred Stones Valentine's banner. He's here to look fabulous and is present in his usual Axe Wyvern Knight class. For stats, Rosado has 40 HP, 43 attack, 46 speed, 44 defense, and 16 friends. He is subscribing to the Just Avoid Eye Contact with Mages and Dragons strategy. 
Rosado doesn't have the highest stats for the class, but sacrificing Rez will put him near the top in attack, speed, and defense. He has speed super boon and is the second fastest axe flyer, so don't underestimate him. For old skills, Rosado only has bonfire, so we have a lot to talk about here. Rosado's weapon is the Axe of Adoration. 16 might excite specials. If about 25% HP, inflict attack, speed, and defense debuffs on the foe, equal to 16 minus the foe's max special cooldown value times 2, with a minimum of minus 8 debuffs. Rosado will also reduce damage from first attacks with an S by 40%, gain bread type cooldown reduction, heal 7 HP after combat, and naturally he pierces enemy percent DR skills on hit. This DR pierce effect is 70% if the foe has higher defense than Brez at the start of combat, but otherwise it's going to be at least always 30%. Sling plus cooldown reduction is great for flyers, and you got 40% DR with sustained healing. Rosado has innate DR pierce, which means you don't have to run no quarter, although you may not get the largest 70% amount, amount if the foe has higher res to start. This could be an issue in two full on tanks. As for debuffs, Rosado punishes low cooldown special users. If the foe has a 1 cooldown special, he inflicts minus 14 attack speed and defense. If they have a 4 cooldown special, you're gonna get that minimum minus 8 debuffs. Overall, lots of tools flyers can't necessarily gain through skills, so that can open up some more build options. Speaking of which, Rosado brings a new beast guild called Wyvern Rift. Essentially, this is Wyvern Flight 4, but instead of matching Pegasus Flight 4, they just made a way stronger version. Would not be surprised to see a Pegasus Rift in the future. Actually though, Wyvern Rift can also upgrade out of Flow Flight 3, so maybe it's a tier 4 for that skill line as well. Onto the effects, Wyvern Rift always inflicts minus 4 attack and defense on the foe. If the user's speed plus defense stats are greater or equal to the foe's speed plus defense stats minus 10, while excluding any phantom skills, then you get a bunch of effects. First off, you deal true damage on hit equal to X and reduce damage from the foe's first attacks with an S by X during combat. X is going to be the unit's flat defense at start of combat minus 35. Basically, you need 42 flat defense to get the max plus 7 true damage and 7 flat DR. In addition, unit gets a free follow-up attack and you deny one of the foe's follow-ups, aka Omni Breaker. Last, increase the speed difference necessary for foe to make a follow-up attack by 20 during combat. Essentially, the foe now needs 25 or more speed to make a natural standard follow-up. Compared to Pegasus Flight 4, we have the same minus 4 attack and defense debuffs, but the stat comparison is now speed plus defense instead of just speed, and it uses in combat stats instead of the at start of combat. Rather than more attack and defense debuffs, we have true damage and flat DR, and there is no comparing with the foe stats, you just need to hit 42 flat defense. Pegasus Flight 4 does have a fall of denial, but Wyvern Rift also adds a free fall up for the user. You then have a similar effect to Diamond's weapon, which literally changes the speed rules of the game. However, take note, Diamond's Fair Fight Blade says increase the speed difference for unit or foe. Wyvern Rift fights dirty, only increases the speed check for the enemy. It also stacks with similar effects, so if Rosado were to fight Diamond, Diamond needs to have 45 or more speed to double, which is hilarious. When Rosado fights someone else who neutralizes the free fall up on his Wyvern Rift, he still only needs the usual 5 or more speed to double. Since we're here, I just want to mention the, that the new potent fall up skill does not actually change the speed rolls like Diamond or Wyvern Rift. It simply says, if you were to change them, then trigger the potent fall up attack. So, in Rosado versus Emblem Marth, Marth needs 25 or more speed to get the regular natural fall up. However, he just needs to be any amount faster than Rosado for the potent follow-up. Now, moving on, last new skill for Rosado is a simple one. Earthwind boost 3 grants plus 5 HP, and if user has more than half health, then gain plus 7 speed and defense. If unit is within 2 spaces of an ally with more than half health, then you also get guard in battle. We just had a tier 4 boost last banner, but this one is for speed and defense stats. Speed's a little iffy if you plan to initiate because you need to stay in your allies for the guard effect. This may be easier to do if you got warping like from Guidance Force skills. For general playstyle, Rosado is a fast, high defense X flyer with slotted cooldown perks, DR piercing capabilities, and percent DR with healing all from his weapon. Wyvern Rift is still like Wyvern Flight in that you need a specific stat spread to run effectively, and obviously Rosado has that spread with high speed and high defense. The speed plus defense check is in combat, but you do need at least 42 flat defense to get the 7 true damage and flat DR. For that reason, you're going to want to watch out for defense debuffs, and you want to bring field buffs to offset if possible. 
Now with Wyvern Rift, Rosado gets Omni Breaker and is actually pretty tough to double naturally because the speed check for the enemy is cranked up by 20. Unless the foe is extremely fast or a high damage magic user who can just one shot him, then Rosado will probably survive outside a strong DR piercing special. The percent DR plus flat DR combo is still great and Rosado can just retaliate when it isn't bonfire thanks to slang and breath type cooldown. If you want, you can run no quarter. For Sea Skills and Sacred Seals, you can actually go double speed and defense rain. The debuffs double in value for Wyvern Rift's speed plus defense check and just makes Rosado tougher and tougher to double naturally. If you go rain snap, you can also get 3 movement. In general though, Axe of Adoration is a pretty offensive weapon when it's cooldown and DR pierce. Wyvern Rift's main goal is to prevent getting doubled, but you can offer a more offensive aggressive build with skills like the Flare Strike combo, Potent 4, Flow B skills, and even aerial maneuvers. I would suggest Flow over Dive Bomb though because Rosado doesn't have offense in a follow-up. Now for more initiation power, Deadly Miasma is a great C skill but best with some kind of Kanto. For other Wyvern Rift stat checking advantages, you can go Speed and Demon's Menace or Oath. Sadly there's no tier for 4 for that one. In the Sacred Seal slot, Squad A's BV3 adds Speed and Defense with HP, you could try Distinct Counter, Mystic Boost can add more healing, and Tempest is another 3 movement option. As usual. Feel free to run any fly mobility skills. On this banner, we have a new Soaring Echo attuned skill. We'll talk about it more, but basically, it's a Guidance 4 type warp ability. All in all, Rosado is going to be a pretty neat unit. Obviously, he's weak to magic, but the guy is going to make you work for those doubles, which can make him a lot more annoying than expected. He also has good damage potential with great cooldown reduction and DR Pierce from his weapon. You can run a bunch of other skills, but Rosado is interesting with the new Wyvern Rift. It's really challenging those pure speed stacking units. Since we have both a rearmed and a tuned hero in this banner, I want to go over the changes in this month's update regarding what skills both types can run. New in update 8.2, rearmed and attuned heroes are now allowed to equip their exclusive skills with any arcane weapon or attuned X skills. Let's use rearmed Tana as an example. Her exclusive B skill is Soaring Wings. Previously, you could not run Soaring Wings without Chris's Arcane Dark Bow, which is potentially a more fitting weapon for Tana. Now you can. In addition, you could not run any attuned skills with Soaring Wings equipped, but that restriction is also lifted. Just to reiterate, this is only for rearmed and attuned heroes, ascended, legendaries, mythics, even regular units, anyone with an exclusive non-weapon skill cannot do this. Always double check before you hand out these arcane weapons and fancy new X skills. Now, rearmed Hortensia is not a huge surprise. Once we saw rearmed Alfred and Alcris, it seemed like if they ever wanted to do an arcane staff, then Hortensia would be the perfect choice as the staff focused royal. He's a flying healer with 36 HP, 44 attack, 47 speed, 16 defense, and 34 res. Just absolute beastly offensive stats with garbage physical bulk. Hortensia, I believe, is the new fastest healer in the game, beating dual Elise by 1 speed. This is because she has HP, attack, and speed super boons. For old skills, not only can you give your healers a new weapon, but Hortensia has Rescue Plus and Poetic Justice. She also has Attack and Speed Catch 4 if you want some stats. Now, Hortensia will be a sought after unit because she has our first arcane staff. 14 might excited specials. This weapon will give allies within 3 spaces 7 HP healing after combat. That is its only support effect. If the unit is above 25% HP, grant plus 5 to all stats, grant a free fallp attack, grant bread type kind of reduction, and deal 7 true damage on hit. Arcane Charmer is kinda by default, the best staff if you want to deal damage. Seaside Parasol is actually pretty good, but Slang, Breath Type Kuna, and Free Fallop is frankly absurd for a healer. These are perks you could only dream of having until last year's Healer Resurgence. Personally, I still would kinda like to have more support utility options for my dedicated support class, but the devs are kinda just making healers into budget colorless mages. In a hilariously sad turn of events, the actual colorless mages without unique weapons like Laron and Nime are stuck with not great options. Meanwhile, healers now get this thing. For the Troubadours and Flying Clerics, this is an amazing staff for cooldown perks. Infantry still can go wild with pulse type skills, and the armored healers may be able to tank a hit to actually charge a special for a counter. 
The offensive healer specials have some decent utility when activated, so pre-charged specials may be worth having in case you can't double. I believe you can go with Wrathful or Dazzling Refines like usual, so safely activating stuff like Holy Pressure is possible. I also believe both variants have stat refines, so that's pretty cool. Not sure when we'll see a second Arcane Staff, but for now, I'm sure a lot of players are going to have some fun. Let me know who you want to give this weapon to. For me, I have a sweet plus 10 Summonlara show who has priority, but man, I really want to give it to Valentine's Lissa for the meme armored battle cleric. Now, while Arcane Charmer is mostly offense focused, Hortensia's unique glittering Anima C skill is all about team utility and a little more power for herself. Each turn, if Hortensia has above 25% HP, she gets plus 6 attack and speed field buffs, the Kanto 1 status, and a status to neutralize stat penalties in combat to herself and allies within 3 spaces for 1 turn. Each turn, she also inflicts minus 6 speed and res debuffs, the panic status, and the disco status onto the closest foe, which then spreads out to any foe within 3 spaces of that. In combat, if Hortensia fights within 3 spaces of an ally, she gets plus 5 attack and speed and no guard. Glittering Anima is an incredible support skill. Kanto and Debuff Neutralization is amazing for the whole team, and her debuffs will always tag someone. The 3 space AoE afterwards is also absurdly large. While Hortensia can make use of the field buffs and debuffs she inflicts, she gets even more stats for offense and no guard to go with all the cooldown perks from Arcane Charmer. Not sure why this is called Glittering Anima when the icon is the same as Hortensia's personal skill, Big Personality. Alfred and Alcris kept the same names for their personal skills, so not sure what's up with that. It might have to do with Hortensia's new inheritable healer special, Glitter of Light. This 3 on healer special is once again a damaging special. When special triggers boost damage by 45% of the foe's res stat, and after combat, inflict the flash status onto the target and foes within 2 spaces. As usual, you cannot charge the special by healing allies, and if you do not have Wrathful Staff, the damage of the special is also cut in half. Like the other offensive healer specials, pick the one with the secondary effect you want the most. Luckily, with Arcane Charmer, you have all the cooldown you need to charge Glitter of Light in one action. Considering Dazzling Staff can also give your healer safety, and Flash can then keep your allies safe, this is a solid option to press the attack if you need to deal with a dangerous counterattacker. Definitely merit in going for a preacher special with things like Quick and Pulse. Rearm Tortensia is going to be an excellent healer. Not only can you take her skills, but you get to keep her, and Glittering Anima it will make her stand out. As long as she is healthy, free field bossing debuffs, Kanto 1, debuff neutralization, panic and discord on foes. Her weapon also grants 7 HP sustain after combat. Hortensia is a great backline support, and if she needs to get things done, Arcane Charm provides the basics to proc Glitter of Light in two hits. You can go with the Dazzling Staff for fine since we already have Poetic Justice. It's not offense enough follow but with her good speed, Hortensia can bypass follow up denial. There's not much to add to Hortensia's kit since you need Wrathful Staff to do any meaningful damage. If you want, you can add Warping in the Sacred Seal slot with Fly Formation or Aerobatics, and of course, you feel free to run any other mobility skills for allies. At the moment, Hortensia is a prime example of using the new inheritance rules for rearmed and attuned heroes. If you want to run Glittering Anima, we can't use the busted Guidance for C skills. Except, now you kinda can, thanks to attuned IV's Soaring Echo. Flowers and infantry within two spaces get two space warping to Hortensia. If Hortensia initiates, she can retreat with Kanto 1. That can then set up a warp for allies, and in Glitter of Light may have flashed the enemy, so now they are safe from counters too. It's great synergy if you want to add warping to Hortensia's support list. For some other skills, you could run the other healer B skills like Dazzling Shift for warping, Attack with Echo also works, and the usual Wings of Mercy is fine as well. For specials, Holy Pressure is solid for AoE gravity, and Lights of Strength can reset cooldowns. In the Sacred Seal slot, Quick and Pulse could be good with other special charging allies. Feel free to swap to other movement healing assist as you wish, they are excellent when you have Kanto to move around after. Overall, Hortensia is a great flying healer, she can provide more good colors damage and provides a ton of fun support effects, she can make excellent use of that new attuned scale if you want to go all out. Last up for today is Attuned Ivy. She got an early beach vacation last year but is now back with her grail headpiece thingy. This time, the Princess of Lucia is a blue flying mage. For stance, she has 41 HP, 47 attack, 34 speed, 26 defense, and 30 res. A good bit different from her summer ult. This Ivy is going for a more balanced stat spread, albeit with still sky high attack. She will tie with others for highest attack mage in the game. Ivy has attack and speed super boons. Speed is a bit important for this Ivy. 
For old skills, Ivy has Luna and Deadly Miasma. It's a really great skill to have on a toon hero for debuffs, low, and those haze tiles. Ivy's unique weapon is the Icebound Tome. 14 might excite specials. If Ivy is on a team with her support partner, she can move to anywhere within two spaces of her partner if they're within three spaces. If no support is on her team, Ivy instead gets three movement. Now, if she initiates or faces a ranged foe, Ivy gets bonus stats equal to 25% of the foe's attack at start of combat, minus four. She will also get no guard and percent DR effects equal to 20, plus the number of spaces moved of whoever initiated times 10. It's a max of 70% damage reduction. Last, when Ivy makes a follow-up attack, she heals 7 HP. From her summer alt, Ivy still gets the huge warp range around her support partner. However, now she gets 3 movement if you don't have a support on the team. Interesting option, although for defense AI teams, that's another 3 movement mage, oh dear. Now for Ivy's stat boost, if the Phil has 72 flat attack, she gets the max plus 14 to all stats. Either way, lots of journal stats and Ivy gets a decent amount of percent DR. Her max warp range is 5 spaces for her partner, and this gets her the highest amount of percent DR at 70%. This DR can work on either phase, but it's not against melee initiators, so close counter is not really going to work here. Even if Ivy only moves 3 spaces, that's still a nice solid 50% damage reduction. In addition, you also got a strange 7 HP healing on follow up attacks only? I don't think we've had that condition before. This will make a little more sense with Ivy's unique A skill, Obsession. Again, same icon as her personal skill from Engage, but different name. At start of combat, if above 25% HP, grant plus 9 to all stats, make a free follow-up attack, and prevent a foe's follow-up attack, then when making follow-up attacks, Ivy gets full DR piercing. If she is healthy, and if decreasing the speed difference needed to make a follow-up by 25 would allow Ivy to trigger a follow-up, then trigger potent X%. percent. If Ivy cannot make a normal follow-up attack, the potent follow-up deals 80% damage. If she can get a triple attack off, then the potent hit will deal 40%. Now, Ivy gets a bunch of overall stats, Omni Breaker, and DR Piercing, but only on follow-ups. Luckily, potent follow-ups count for this distinction, and that applies to Ivy's healing from her weapon as well. Basically, Ivy does sort of want to have good speed, because she wants that potent hit whether it's to replace her normal double or going for that triple hit like Marth. If you guys do not understand how potent follow-ups work, you really should, because it kind of seems like this is not going to be a rare feature. It might be very common in the future. Like we discussed with Wyvern Rift, the potent B skill and now Obsession do not actually change the speed rules. It just checks if you were to decrease the speed check by 25. As a refresher, Ivy doesn't need to be super super fast, she just needs to be within 20 speed of the enemy and you will get that potent attack. For Ivy's attuned X skill, she has Soaring Echo which we talked about a lot already. Infantry and flying allies within 2 spaces can move to a space within 2 spaces of the user. Summer Ivy is still the only unit with Soaring Guidance, and now it's in a Toon skill minus the stat boost and offense and no follow-up support. Regardless, the 2 space warp itself is ridiculously strong, and is meant to play off of Ivy's own crazy warping to her support partner. Soaring Echo will be a popular option for a lot of flyers, so do be aware of that. With the C slot now freed from Guidance 4, you can now run something like Rain Snap, Oath 4, or the fun Deadly Miasma like Ivy. I feel like it's no coincidence that Valentine's Mur just came back with more warp bubble options. Last new skill for today is Attack and Res Far Trace 4. We got our first tier 4 Far Trace last month, and this is just another stat variant. You still have Kanto remaining, but now it's always at least Kanto 1. This will get rid of the ability to save the Kanto action if you were to get danced. Now, the other new addition to the tier 4 is that you get 7 tree damage on hit, and this will apply to AoE specials as well. If you need the tier 3 of this skill, the recent Valentine Selena has it as a 4 star focus. For general playstyle, Attuned Ivy does have a few quirks for better or for worse. She can gain a large amount of stats to everything and a decent amount of percent damage reduction that works on all hits. This even works on enemy phase, but only against ranged. Generally, Ivy does want to be initiating though. Her DR piercing and healing only work for follow-up attacks, so ideally she basic attacks, tanks a hit with her percent DR, then she normal follow-ups into potent follow-up. Ivy does not have offense enough follow-ups, but if she outspeeds, normally she can double into follow-up denial. If that gets stopped, the potent follow-up attack may still happen as long as she isn't massively outsped. 
In that kind of scenario, Ivy may only deal 80% damage with the potent hit, but she still fully pierces DR's skills, and no guard can mean she gets a special proc as well. To top it off, Daily Miasma is a great initiation tool with minus 5 debos and full low. After combat, you got at least Kanto 1 to lay down the Haze Terrain, and maybe Soaring Echo can lend an ally warp in to follow up, same as we discussed for Hortensia. Regarding Ivy's support gimmick, you can choose whether or not you want the long range warp or the 3 movement. That's kinda neat since both can synergize with Soaring Echo. For some other skills, I don't think you want to ditch Obsession, but Cultist's Strike is there if you want, don't need Kanto. Ivy can technically proc Desperation if you want to be like Emblem Marth. You can try to stack more percent DR with things like Guard 4 or Brash 4. In the C slot, I think Deadly Miasma is great, but you could go for Oath 4 stats for either phase or a Tier 4 smoke like Panic or Fatal. In the Seal slot, Savage Blow can stack with Deadly Miasma, or you can go for Heavy Blade or just more stats. I'm a bit torn on how much speed Ivy should build because it does matter, but she's not going to be outspeeding the craziest speed stackers out there even with Potent's help. It's still worth a consideration though, and as a Dark Horse skill, I think Winter Water Sweep could be extra annoying. The sweep effect is more safety with potentially 3 hits in a row if everything goes right. It will only work into foes Ivy actually can outspeed though. Overall, Ivy should be interesting if you're a fan of mages who don't kill over if they trip on a pebble. Like Legendary Robin, she has a deceptive amount of stats in combat and a good amount of percent DR, although it's not going to be 70% all the time. Ivy has a decent amount of speed, which is where the potent effect can work. She's going to struggle into very fast no fallup units, but she can put up a good fight if she can get to any fallup, whether it's natural or potent. Maybe pair her with Emblem Lin whenever she comes out for some of those good old speed taker shenanigans. That'll be it for this Illusion banner, a whole lot of fun stuff, although I still can't believe Kagetsu is a demote. We got our first Arcane Staff, more potent follow-up effects, and even speed roll changes from Wyvern Rift. The fun doesn't stop there though, because Mavier is our Grand Hero Battle Unit, and he's pretty neat. Actual min-max stats with a unique lance, it may not look like the Flame Lance, but it carries on in spirit. We'll talk about Mavier in the next video. Let me know your thoughts on this banner, and good luck if you're summoning, I really want that arcane staff, but I'm still going on the Valentine's banner, so basically, I'm screwed. Gonna need some really lucky summons coming up. Thank you for watching though, and I will see you guys in the next video.